Tamaso ma jyotir gamaya Mrityar ma amritam gamaya Om shanti 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 Oh mother hold our hand make all our efforts towards this journey successful. Remove all obstacles by Babaji, Krishna, Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, Divine Mother. Take us from success to success and remove all strifes and wrong understandings between the people of the world, particularly within this group. May Brahman be seen, be realized, be observed that we are that Brahman. We are that constant light. As a symbol of the Brahman, I put up this light at the back. This is a makeshift arrangement. There is devotees. And we are a little far away from the organized session that we're doing. But between Sharada Man's Divine Mother's Grace and our team together, we are trying to do this little makeshift arrangement. So bear with us and continue to share with all your wisdom and take up the journey. So that at the end of this life, this life of the body, when the body will stay back as, as a physical matter, either to be burnt or to be buried. And the mind along with Sukshma Sharira, Mano Buddhi Chitta Ahankara, as Shankaracharya says, shall go on to that process as per karmas of each individual to be reborn and reborn and reborn, except those who actually realize the purpose of this journey who we really are. And our journey today, yours and mine, is to become that one with that oneness which is within us. So in which we covered on Thursday a very simple understanding, Drik Drisha Viveka. Drik Drisha Viveka, we shall go over, you know, there are uh, two versions of this. Who has written Drik Drisha Viveka, strangely, is not known at all. No names written. Some people say 1400 years ago, Shankaracharya had written. Some put it to Vidyaranna, who had done Panchadashi and many other. Uh, maybe he had written it. And some such names are there. Uh, wise ancients are Rishi. They place it as most likely it is Vidyaranda. So salutations to the south of India, Vijayanagar, where this possible thing has been blessed to us. It's a very powerful thing. The beauty about this Dhridhisha Viveka is the, we, we give a little punchline only on the last Thursday. Today we shall talk about 10-15 minutes and we'll go in for a 10-15 minutes, 20 minutes of meditation. And take up the journey in which he has uniquely not written down, like generally in a books of this time, six, seven hundred years ago to thousands of years ago, before you start any book written on the Vedanta, it is always started up with the salutations to the gurus, to the divine mother, to the Brahman. None of that has been written in this. It is, it is purely starting straight with the text. And the first verse itself, there are uh, firstly, 
there are two versions of this Dridrisha Viveka. One is with 31 verse, and the other one is 46 verse. And the wise, especially, they say possibly the 31 verse is the one which is original, and the rest of them were added up much later. Be that as it may, we consider our specialists in the world today to take that 31 verse is the one which is original of Dhrik Drishya Viveka, in which the essential component is one and one alone. What is that? Drashta and Drishya are different. The person who is seeing, seer, and the objects which are seen are different. Very simple. And this, the beauty part of the logic in this is that they are not at all any time forcing the modern days intellectuals and why Vedanta is more so applicable today. They're not asking us to believe in a particular religion. They're not telling us that you have to follow this way and that way. They're saying, listen to it. Be able to repeat. That is clause one. Be able to repeat what is being spoken in your own mind. Second, try to understand it. That what is being spoken is being understood. It is like supposing you speak German to me and I do not understand German. I am not understanding it. The language should be simple and understandable. And number three is whatever is being understood I consider with full respect to the author that it is true. I may not understand it to that clarity to say it is my own belief. I may still want to challenge it by asking questions. That is all acceptable. But have that respect that these are hundreds and thousands of years ancient India's richest heritage where the world over today are talking about it and wanting to find out more and more on this. Great universities like New York University, Harvard, etc. they're all doing research on these locals. And you and I, our intention, this is how it came into my mind, that we are practicing a so powerful Kriya Yoga. A Kriya Yoga is the power of the Raja Yoga which is Krishna taught Arjuna, Bhagavad Gita is talking. But in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is also talking about in the second and the 11th chapter that you should follow all the four yogas. So Raja Yuga, along with good karma, good bhakti, and intensified bhakti to that God alone is true throughout the day and the time and in all activity. And the last is the knowledge, Jnana Yoga which is what we are practicing. Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, Raja Yoga, Kriya Yoga practice. So all food put together, the punchline of this, when it happens, how can it not happen? It would happen. In this, these are the first three to start with. Second is, the principles of the Dvig Disha Viveka are very simple. Only one thing which continues again and again. The seer and the seen are different. So I am the seer. So my instrument of vision is one. My ear, nose, throat, five senses, they're different, 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 different function. For the instrument of the vision is only one. And that's my eye. That's one. But the, that what I'm seeing today, like I can see the screen, the camera, there are so is different than my eye. No doubt in that, nobody can challenge it. Second, this is the part of the first sloka itself. Second is, the scene are many. What I'm seeing, like there are walls and pictures and paintings and furniture and people and trees and mountains and dogs and dolphins, everything is there outside. But this object of vision is only one. The vision is one and everything else is many. One is 
seer and seen are different. Second is, seer is one, seen are many. And third, the scene keeps changing. Right now, wherever you're sitting, soon enough that object of the room would vanish and may change into something else. But the seer will continue to remain one constant. With this, the next step, that is my object of my instrument of vision. Next is the instrument of the vision itself. I can feel that I need my specs or I'm feeling sleepy, my eyes are closing or my eyes are watering or my eyes needs maybe cataract operation. Who is that seeing that my eyes require this? This is Dhritishya Viveka is telling us it is our mind. So the moment mind starts to see the eye, eye becomes the scene and the seer becomes the mind. Notice the shift. Now mind becomes the seer and the eye becomes the scene. And the same thing, eye and the mind are different. No doubt in that. Ears and mind is different. Nose and mind is different. Taste and mind is different. Same principle. I and the mind is different. Second principle. Eyes, conditions keep changing. Mind is relatively remaining same. Relatively. You know the implications. And third, that though it is keep changing, though it is different, and there are many conditions of the eye, my condition relatively remaining constant. And now, soon enough, I realize that I feel very happy. I don't like it. I get angry. I get jealous. I am totally devoted. I understand it, what he is talking about. I cannot understand what he is talking about. All these conditions are the conditions of the mind. Now the question, Rig Disha Vive, coming to the final chapter, how is that happening? Who is that who's witnessing the mind to be angry, happy, joyful, understanding it, not understanding it, desire, greed, craving. I want to do kind act. I want to do loving act, spiritual act, non-spiritual act. Who is doing that? So Vidyaranna in the Vedanta is going ahead and explaining that to be Sakshi. They give it a name called Sakshi, witness. This witness is ever constant. Now look at witness is ever constant, ever light. And this is what we do during our meditation time. In the meditation, we go into the Omkar meditation. A uh, Uma Jagrat Sapna and Deep Sleep State Susupti. In these three states, there is one Turiya is remaining constant and watching all three states. These three states are also the mind. Notice what is happening. Jagrat said, mind is active watching various things, mind is changing continuously, mind is different, Sakshi remains one, and mind and Sakshi is different. You say, how is it different? Why can't Sakshi be mind? It is not, because the relationship as explained, if mind and Sakshi is just like the mirror and my face. I see my face in the mirror. Okay, mirror is reflecting my face. Mirror and my face, the reflective image from the mirror and my face are different. And depending on the conditions of the mind, my perspective to the samsara is different, to the world is different. Depending on the surface condition of the mirror, I see my face different. If there is a crack in the mirror, my face is cracked. 
if the mirror is very old and many kind of a bubbles and things like that, or black spots have come, this is what I say is the aged face. And if the mirror is broken very badly or shattered or very poor reflecting service, my face shows very poorly. Notice, mind is just like that. The mind is a reflection. It appears as me. In this case, the face is the true me, the I. In this case, metaphorically. And the reflection is who we are. So in this reality of the world, this is where our application of the knowledge of the Vedanta comes in. So powerfully simple and so powerfully beautiful is that this moment I say I, you and I, we always say this is Robin Ghosh, that is the body and the face and the name and the form, the people around me, the objects, etc. That is not so. It appears to be so. so what is the reality? Jagrat said I'm seeing the world around, the world, the people, the different conditions, and then go on to the dream sleep state. In the dream sleep state, whatever things are happening, I wake up and I say, oh, that was only a dream. And we realize that what was in the dream is not real. If somebody, there was a beautiful joke, one friend comes and says, you, owed me 3,000 rupees. The other guy said, 3,000 rupees? When did I take it from you? He said, yesterday. I said, come on, yesterday I didn't even meet you. No, 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 you took it from me in, in your dream. Imagine, you will laugh at the thing. Just like that, the dream state of the sleep dream state of you and me, every day it's happening, is not real. If you have eaten one cookie in the daytime breakfast, and then you've gone up to sleep and eaten three more cookies, you don't put your calorie count as four cookies now. You say, no, that was dream. You won in a dream lottery ticket, and you don't say, I have to go and pay tax for that money or check my bank balance. You know, it's a dream. Third stage, shushupti, deep sleep. Mind is gone, body is gone but something of ours remain. And that ours, you say, no, everything is sleeping. I don't remember anything. It is all blank. Yes, it is all blank, but that blankness is because mind is not there. The mind is missing. And whatever you and I see is because of the consciousness reflecting through the mind, but the reflecting through the mind is shut off. So you blank, deep sleep. And you say, I slept like a log. It was a beautiful, dreamless sleep. But something is there which tells you, hey, I had a wonderful sleep. How did we know that? It is because that consciousness, Turiya, though it is experiencing Jagrat in the waking state, the world around, experiencing the dream state, the world in dream, and experiencing the deep sleep state. If something is experiencing it, it's the Sakshi. Jigdisha Vivika is saying that is our Turiya state and that's who we really are. It is now the simile of the waves and the oceans. And actually, it is just the water. In the wave, there is water. On the ocean, there is water. Remember the simile? We cannot say that this wave has got little water. Ocean has got huge water. So ocean is God. This wave is me. That is called Vishishta Dvaita Bhad. But in Advaita, Advaita it is all is water. Ocean is also water, water is, wave is also water. 
if i take away the water from the waves nothing remains take away the water from the ocean nothing remains so what is the status status is very simple it is the water and water alone it is the consciousness and consciousness alone which makes it possible for us to perceive this world our duty is to realize this oneness and take on the journey with understanding we when i say we who we really are who i really am it is not the mind not the name not the body not the form but the consciousness imagine i was just sharing with shardha ma'am today morning and after the meditation let's just think this consciousness as per advaita vad advaita consciousness and us consciousness are one and alone one and alone that one consciousness that one water whether in the ocean in large quantity or whether in the wave is a smaller quantity shape and content and the size is not material important is only the content of the water it is the water it is not quantity of water it is not the shape of water it is water element same thing is the, it is the consciousness and the second reflection was think there are 7 plus billions of mind in this universe today as known to us in this earth everybody has got billions of problems and in our family little bit two minds or four minds or six minds i've got so many problems so many issues so many conflicts why because our mind is continuously staying active in doing assessment judgment taking corrective action and not staying detached by knowing i'm not this fine but i will perform 100% 10 out of 10 with that mind with that body and with the form when i do that you will find there will be a fine discrimination between the consciousness which is which is ever untouched like the light sunlight falling on dirty something on the road doesn't get dirty falling on a pitcher of wine doesn't get drunk falling on holy river ganga does not become holy ever detached ever pure ever single ever one like that is our consciousness ever pure notice same is god's consciousness and ours is one this is advaita vad in vishishta advaita it is differently taken So remember the Hanuman ji's very famous word when Rama asked him, "How do you see me?" Now Rama is Ishvara, Rama is God, and Hanuman ji is his Seva. So he says, "Deha buddhya daso ham." When I think of myself as this huge body, Hanuman ji, I am your servant. And he goes on to say, "Jiva buddhya." sentient being with a mind and a body when i look at myself as sentient being as jiva jiva buddhya tadam sakha i am your friend atma buddhya when i look at myself as that consciousness at atman tameva aham we are one and he goes on to ask the next question when came to him which one is right he said it is even is chaya buddhi that is all is true you must be aware of this <clears throat> <clears throat> rama at one stage was seeing that nal and neel whatever stone they were touching with the name of rama they were blessed by lord brahma in anticipation before they were born whatever you touch will float and they knew this situation will come so rama quietly went down and touched some stone 
and he saw that the stone sank. He was very disturbed. He said, my disciple, Nal and Nail, they're just taking Jay, Jay Sri Ram and the stones are floating. And I am touching it. I am Rama. And is it going down? What is this? He was little, as the story goes, possibly he was little morose. Hanumanji was right behind him. Hanumanji went and asked Sri Ram, What happened? Why are you feeling down? The Rama said, honestly shared with him. Hanumanji said, it is true. See, whatever you, whoever you hold on, they will float. When you touch the stone and you leave it, it has to sink. So if you leave me, I'm going to sink. Because you're holding, and that is how through you, Null is actually making it float. Over here, because you left the stone, the stone had to sink. The beautifully explained to show the total faith in the divine guru and the God. In our understanding of the basic approach through the Vedanta and Advaita, through the all four yogas and through our regular practices, all we need to do is hold on to this understanding with clarity. That this is the truth. Vohi satya hai. And with which we practice. Knowing all the time. That. We are going to reach that goal. And prayers. To Brahman. To remove all obstacles from our life. Hold our hand. Make our understanding with clarity. So that we understand. The objects of our drive, the contents of the messages that we receive from the universe and attain that oneness. I noticed this very powerful meditative technique of the Vedanta. Shankaracharya had discovered it being practiced today. Mindfulness meditation, stage one, in which in the uh, ooh, mm, practice it now after this, when you say uh, you are looking at the Jagra state, you are saying, I'm waking state. The consciousness is watching my Jagra state. But I am not that body, the disease, the sickness, the pain, the suffering, the lack of money, job is of the body, is of the intellect, is of the buddhi, is of the mind, but not of me. I am the Turiya. In the Sapna state, in the Sapna, whatever is happening, it is of this Sapna, ooh, and mm, it's the deep sleep state, in the absence of all experience, is experiencing the absence of all experience is also by the experiencing, by the consciousness. All three are because of Turiya, that fourth state. And then, Though it is blankness and the darkness of the Turiya, go just beyond that is to the Turiya state is the brilliance of light. As Krishna was seen by Arjuna in Virat form in the 11th chapter, he explained that brilliance of light, thousands of sun, that light, imagine yourself as the Turiya and then when you reflect on it, that you are that light in the meditation and stay with that light, you will suddenly find it is happening with so many now. I totally lose sense of the body, of the jagrat, of the deep sleep state. And it's so simple and powerful. Today's makeshift arrangement so that we never miss the connection. And lots of sacrifice and arrangement has been done by Shadhama, my pranam, always to the Divine Mother, the Mother of the Universe. Prayers to all of you, to the Brahman in you. You practice that meditation now and take it on for about 30 minutes or so. If it is more beautiful, at least 15 minutes, morning, 15 minutes, evening. I wish you good luck. Jai Guru.